it's a, a magical time, you know, four years that you can think about things, you can develop parts of yourself, you can find that part of you that is separate from your family, but is also totally a part of where you came from. Physically, we're so defined as well. You have to come down, that's going to transform. You have to come down those two lanes, you know, or you come on the Appalachian Parkway, or you come up, you know, from through the Cumberland Gap. There's almost uh, the definition of the landscape that defines and that we sit, the campus green sits on a hill, you know, and then there's, it's just, it's almost like it's, it's a womb that allows anything that you choose to explore, understand, or reason about, or reject because that's all positive too, that's somebody's choice. I think it's quintessential America. It partly comes from the amazing ideals that um, the founder somehow put together through some miracle. And it partly is what happens when you bring people from every culture and every part of the world together and you give them a safe way to mix it up. And the creativity that comes from that um, can be amazing. My dad uh, felt very strongly about education right from the time I was a small girl. And he said, I don't care where you go to college or what you major in, but you must get a liberal arts degree. Always I was going to get my education. It was really, really important. And so I received a scholarship went to New York to school, decided I did not want to be married to retailing, and then I came back to Ohio University because they had a wonderful uh, clothing textile department headed up by Allen Bain. I didn't know actually I wanted to go to college. Uh, I was at Mifflin and it was an advisor who, she saw me in the hallway uh, with my uh, football playing boyfriend and I was being inappropriate as teenage girls sometimes are and she walked, came up, stuck her arm through mine, walked me away from him and said, you're too smart not to go to college. And she just made it her business to get me to college. Nobody in my family had been to college. My mother didn't get her college degree until I was 24 years old. So I wasn't at that point really thinking about college or thinking it was possible. But this woman, this amazing guidance counselor, she brought us down to OU on a, a college uh, field trip. And um, I just fell in love with the place. And I said to my mom and dad, uh, I want to go. You know, I want to go to college. And he goes, you have to pay for it. And I said, I will. And um, they asked me for my choices. And I said, oh, it's OU. They said, why? I said, because there's hills down there. And I like terrain that has movement. It's part of how I see life. They have a really strong, you know, dance department. And they have all kinds of things that I'm interested in. And uh, it's a really pretty campus. And I want to go. And that's how. Uh, Oh, you happened short of uh, applying and uh, being accepted. It's actually a funny story. Um, my dad is an alumnus from Ohio University, and I wasn't interested in the school. I'm the firstborn trailblazer, you know, so I kind of wanted to do my own thing. And my mom asked me to come down and humor him and just come and see the campus. And I decided I would definitely do it just for my dad. So we came down here, and I fell in love with it as soon as we turned the corner driving on the highway, and I was. I knew I was in trouble because I loved it so much. And then I went on my tour with my parents and my brother too. And he, my brother actually told me that he wanted to come here before I did. And so I was right up there in line with the tour guide at the end of the tour. And so that, I just fell in love with the campus. Every time I came down, I just felt like I was at home. Now, I didn't come from a family that had a lot of money, but my brother went to Notre Dame on a, a football scholarship and my sister hated school, but she wouldn't go to college, and so I was able to go because they could afford it. And um, I had a teacher, Miss Mayer, who was, uh, was an OU graduate, and she came to me and to my friend, who both of us were going to go to college. Not many people went in those days. And so uh, she suggested OU to us and said she would help us get a scholarship which meant that was $45 a semester you got. But to my family, $90 was a lot of money. And so my friend Shirley and I used to go to the swimming pool in the summer and we'd look, take the bulletins, we had bulletins from the library and look up how many men there were at each one of the schools. <laughs> 
And we always say, and this is true, we looked at OU and there were 6,000 students at the time and I think there were only 2,000 girls. So we thought it would be a very good place to go to find our life's uh, companions. Besides, we got the $90. <laughs> After I kind of looked at all my other options, I was like, OU has one of the best journalism schools. I really need to go here if I want to do journalism. So um, that was really the, the main reason I came here was for the journalism school. But after I got here and learned to love it, then obviously I was pumped that I picked it. My father ha was college educated, my mother was not. And there was an expectation that, uh, that you would go to college to get a good job. I grew up in New Jersey and a reasonably high percentage of the people around worked in New York City and there was the concept that in order to get ahead you needed to go to college. Uh, and there was a lot of uh, discussion about whether or not it was worth having a girl go to college because they're just gonna get married, they're not gonna work, should we, should we go ahead and pay for the girl to go to college? In my family we had two girls so that was not an issue. The concept was you were gonna go to college. <laughs> 